school. But with that in mind, some topics come to the fore. These include issues of connectivity, be it hardware like laptops or internet access, building capacity in teachers to work more efficiently remotely, and a big point of contention, vaccines, vaccine hesitancy, and return to school policies centered around inoculation. It's time to go in-depth on education with Minister Dr. Nian gadsby Dolly. Thank you so much for making the time, Minister. It is the first day of school, and I want to ask what feedback have you been getting about the first day of school in addition to some of those key points that you've been looking at going, moving towards the resumption of school? Hi, DK. Well, thankfully, we've had no adverse reports thus far about the opening of school. Of course, it's been virtual, and so our students have been engaged online, or teachers and so on, and thank God it's gone well as far as reports coming into the ministry thus far. Now, there are a great deal of initiatives that are happening with the ministry. One of those is laptop distribution to children. And uh, these children include a special needs students who qualify by uh, the means test. Can you elaborate on that a bit, please? All right, let me just back up, give a little bit of history. When um, we would have been in September 2020, we would have done a survey in the ministry, and that related me, actually, my appointment, but there were 65,000 students indicating they did not have their personal device. Now, this didn't mean that they weren't accessing the online education. However, in terms of them having their personal laptop and so on, they didn't have that. As we progressed, we I want to thank all of our corporate sponsors. We were able to have 22,000 devices, over 22,000, donated by the corporate sector directly to students in schools. In addition to that, the government procured 20,000 devices and we would have sent out the means test um, in March and April for students to complete, their parents would complete if they were desirous of obtaining a government procured device. So we received uh, just over 23,000 applications for the means test and based on what we have received and those that were successful, by the end of this week we would have distributed all of the devices to persons that applied. We are getting um, persons saying now that they didn't hear about it. Now we send this out through principals to schools. We also advertise on social media, but there are quite a few persons that are telling us they didn't hear about it, or in some cases, they had a device and you know something has gone wrong with the device and they would like to apply. So based on our supplying all the successful applicants at this time, we will be looking at students who are still in need of a device, either because they need a replacement or because they did not apply in the initial meeting. But Minister, Minister, having a fast car with no gas means that the fast car doesn't work. Yeah. Having laptops, you need connectivity. How is that being addressed? Okay. We would have done in the means test as a part of that, we would have asked about connectivity. So we know that there are quite a few students who do need connectivity at home, and we are working with IGOV TT. Now, they have already procured the devices, the MiFi devices, which are to be given to students, and we are just awaiting them to come into the country now to be able to distribute. As I said, the means test would have collected the information, so we already have the information with regards to who needs, and so we will be moving in that direction as soon as we take possession of those devices. But I want to thank our corporate sponsors as well, TSCT and B-Mobile, um, and Digicel, sorry, they would have worked with us and they are also offering low cost packages for households. And so we know that um, quite a few, we would have supplied them with data because they are also sponsors who would have given tablets to students with three months connectivity um, already in the SIM cards. So they have already gotten data from us and we have been collaborating with them to get the information to parents who need it about the low cost packages that are available. And so we know that quite a few of them would take advantage of that as well. And Minister, one of the things that you would have spoken about uh, more than once is the issue of learning loss. Yeah. What is learning loss and how is it being addressed from the perspective of the ministry? Learning loss is any regression in student learning that takes place over an extended time of absence in school. So for example, from a normal vacation that we have, would have just come off, that two month vacation, you would find students having learning loss because they wouldn't be necessarily engaged every day in schooling. And so if that happens on a two-month vacation, could you imagine what happens when students are not in school for extended periods of time? 
or as happened in the virtual environment where they had to have a transition to you know getting into that virtual they had to have supervision at home and so on so it is accepted that this would be a part of the COVID-19 landscape. It's a global phenomenon. And so in Trinidad and Tobago, what we are doing is working with the teachers. And we have asked that in weeks two or three of the term, they do a diagnostic for the students where the ministry will supply exactly where the students are supposed to be based on their class level. And that diagnostic and the ministry will supply the math and the English language arts part of it. It will assist teachers in seeing exactly where their students are. So they'll be able now to tweak their curricula and their schemes of work for the term to really meet the needs of the students. In addition to that, the ministry has received tenders um, for the online literacy and numeracy solutions. We have sent that out. We sent out an expression of interest first. We got quite a few respondents, so we know that there are online solutions out there, and they would utilize adaptive learning. So the students now can be self-paced and self-directed in terms of going on, doing exercises to build up their skills. Math and grammar, these are the fundamentals. And so we are looking forward to having that contract awarded and having that available for students. So that it, it will meet the learning loss that we know they would face and assist them in the most fundamental areas. But that asynchronous learning, I really appreciate the fact that it can be taking place on a self-paced basis. Yeah. Uh, has there been any conversation about social skills, the lack of interaction, and how that affects the, the, the students? A lot of conversation because, um, as we all know, when you think back of school and your days at school, you think about your friends. You think about, you know, running and playing in the yard. You think about all of that. And that constitutes fun. It constitutes how you would have learned about teamwork. It constitutes how you would have accepted losses and all of that. So that's a big part of what our children are not getting now. And that is why um, I would have alluded to the fact that the online environment is good. And it's the best we can offer our students at this point in time based on their health and safety. But the sooner we get our children back to school, and the UN has been speaking to this for um, almost a year now, the sooner we get them back to school, we get them back to the point where they can socialize, and that's really important. So our Student Support Services Division, they have been doing a lot of work. Um, they have been trained to deliver online, so that's your guidance counselors, your school social workers, and they have been interacting with our students, even with parents and with teachers, to allow them to transition um, better to this particular situation that we are facing now. So as we start the new term, they are also engaged in workshops with schools, with parents, with teachers, to be able to um, bring our students into alignment. A lot of them are disappointed that we are starting a new year and they're not back out to school. So um, the Student Support Services Division, they are doing that work of dealing with the psychosocial needs of our students at this time. And really one of the things I want to ask, well, in terms of getting back to school, which we will talk about on the, in, on the other side of the break, mm -hmm. it, one of my fears really is having children go to school and then come home with a different mask. The way that sometimes people would exchange food. Yeah. So I, I like your mask more than mine. So in yes. terms of like some of those considerations that yeah. will be used and taken into consideration to get back to face-to-face -to -face school mm -hmm. would be the subject of our discussion when we return from this break. We are speaking with Line Minister for the Ministry of Education, Dr. Nian gatsby Dolly. Stay with us. KJ and Friends give you more reasons to celebrate with our biggest independent sales day event. Get 30% off all our innovative learning systems. This is a great investment for your children. I would encourage any parent to buy this product. Buy this kit for your children. It's very good. That's huge savings on the most successful educational programs designed that's aligned with the Ministry of Education syllabus. 30% off the only learning system backed by 10 years of achievement in home-based learning and thousands of successful students. She graduated as class valedictorian. Had it not been for the SEA success, she would not have done so well. Call now for this amazing offer. Get our newly upgraded packages for preschool and primary school at these incredibly discounted prices. This is a limited time offer, so call now. 800 re That's 800-7323. Let's transform your home into an effective learning environment.
Every word, every line, every paragraph depicts a real moment in someone's life. A father, a sister, a mother, a brother. We at Newsday are dedicated to you, the people, and through independent, unwavering journalism, strive to always bring your stories to life. Because your stories are more than just words. Newsday, independent and credible. So you finally downloaded SEC's Investor Protection app. I'm chatting with the investor bot right now, live and interactive. Really simple to navigate, right? Definitely. I'm getting my daily investor tips and investment fraud updates with ease. And there's a comprehensive list of registered registrants and investments for due diligence. Plain talk, this is the easiest way to submit investment complaints and report scams to the SEC. Yep, I can send images, videos, documents, even audio files and stop scammers in their tracks. I've made much better investment choices since I started using it. Me too. Loads of investor info in the palm of my hands, and I love it. It's time to get up. That's for you. And that's for you. Feel better, Mom. Panadol multi-symptom. Relief in minutes. Seven cold and flu symptoms. Panadol multi-symptom. A dose of efficacy and care. Welcome back. We are speaking with Education Minister Dr. Nian Gadsby Dolly. Minister, what is being used as a, a yardstick for determining when face-to-face -face classes will start and what tier of students are being considered? Well, I'm Minister of Education, not Minister of Health, and I would tell you that the main determinant comes from Ministry of Health and their assessment of the, the risk, really. So, for example, now we have vaccinations, and so they look at the vaccination rate and how, you know, how many of us are fully vaccinated and how that protects the children, because that's also a layer of protection for children, especially those who can't be vaccinated. And therefore, if you have a high level of infections in the country, or a low level of vaccinations in your country, then your risk is higher. And that would demand that, you know, you, you balance, you balance the exposure to a great extent. So you would have heard the Prime Minister speak to the imminent return of our older students, those who are able to be vaccinated, because that would lower the risk for them. And you would have heard him speak to the mandatory vaccination status for them to come out to school, because again, interacting with um, the public, and not just the teachers in the school, but there are other persons in school, there are taxi drivers, there are people who they might buy something from in a shop. All of these persons interact with our students and we don't know their status, if they're vaccinated or not. So that is why it, it's all a, a measure of the risk. And so that's why that, that cohort would have been asked to come out first. And also they are the ones that are facing exams. So you'd have seen us bring them out earlier this year in February of 2021. They needed to come out because they had to finish their exam requirements. So it's the same imperative that's happening now. And so because this layer of protection is available to manage the risk, we ask that they are, are protected in that way. Now, I like the fact that you, you mentioned the Prime Minister. And one of the things that the Prime Minister has been saying well, on numerous occasions is that it is a balancing act between lives and livelihoods. Mm -hmm. And with that, we have a question that was sent to us via Instagram by a young lady who was asking, what efforts has the ministry considered for the opening of preschools and daycares to allow working mothers to return to work? Well, as a working mother myself, <laughs> with children who are school age and are at home, I understand and appreciate the issue. And Minister Morris Julian and I have spoken about it, because she's also in that position. And we've had to, to balance, to juggle, to depend on older siblings, um, other family members to assist and to ensure that our children are supervised. 
But this is more than just the preschools and the daycares. This really speaks to the entire working population. So it really is an issue that um, is one of labor. And it's one that deals with an overarching policy of how we deal with working parents and children being at home. And which is why it's so important for us to regain that level of normalcy because on a normal basis, we have services provided while we are at work. But in this circumstance, because we have to balance the risk because our vaccination percentages are not as high as they could be, these are things that will persist. So if we are able to get that vaccination rate up and so on, then we can open up more and it will allow working parents like myself, like the person who asked the question, to have care for their children while they are at work. So it really is a matter of uh, a wider policy, but we can affect that policy by our behavior in terms of our vaccination and how we, we take that up. And I want to thank Stacey Lee Mary for actually submitting that question for you to answer, Minister. But this period, this pandemic, it has exposed so many things and has also provided some opportunities. So what are some of those things that you're looking at in the education policy, looking at 2022 to 2027? Uh, I'm, I'm sure there would be a great deal, but looking at the hierarchy, what are three of those main things that you're saying, okay, well, if we do this, we will be in a good place? Well, definitely, I would have to center it around digital transformation. I can tell you, I was a teacher back in 2006, and I did my educational technology postgraduate diploma. So even at that time, as way back as 2006, the ministry was making strides to go towards digital education. However, we are in 2021, and it really took the pandemic, and it took that period of having to move to digital that allowed us to make strides that we would not have taken, I think, in the next 20 to 30 years. So therefore, digital transformation and cashing in and holding on to the gains that we've made now, that is one of our main um, areas of focus. So we would have met with stakeholders last week discussing the learning management system. Because although our teachers and our students and our parents have done very well in emergency mode for online learning, the gold standard of online learning, of organized online learning, is a learning management system where you have teachers with their own e-classroom and all the work is laid out, it's prepared, they can do quizzes with their students, they can do um, e-testing in a more fulsome and productive way. And that is really where we want to go to and we'd have met with our um, stakeholders describing the vision that we have. We have started at the Ministry of Education as another one of those main goals to support that, the Education Technology Unit which didn't exist before, which we are now staffing. And that is important because to move to online learning in this organized way, you have to have staff who are dedicated to that task. So it's a digital ecosystem that is being built. It's not just the devices. As you so rightly said, it's not just devices, it's connectivity. But it's not just devices and connectivity, it's trained teachers. And so from March 2020, there's another pillar the training of teachers in online delivery, that started to take place and it's ongoing and continuous because our teachers now, this is a change management that involves human beings. And we have to take the time, we have to put the effort and make the investment in training the teachers. So it's, it's devices, it's connectivity, it's teacher training. It's also student training to give them the facility to interact in the online environment. It's building an LMS which allows organized online learning. So all of these pillars fit into that digital transformation and all of that is a part of what we are building. Of course, again, as we are doing for the online literacy and numeracy solution at this time, we have re we've received the tenders and we are going through. At this time, we are also evaluating the ebook tenders and that's another part of it because if you're going to have your LMS, you're going to have your e-classrooms, then you also need to have your resources available for your teachers so, and your students. So the e-books, those tenders are now being evaluated as well. We did an EOI earlier in the year and got great responses. So we know that there are e-books available. So that's another part of it as well. So bringing all the parts together will allow us to make, make that transformation into the digital um, learning sector. And this is not simply for when you can't go to school. 
this is a part of learning. This is the best practice across the world. This is where we were heading, but we have really gotten to a point exacerbated by the COVID situation where it is within our grasp. And so we have been making the policy changes, the staffing changes, to be able to capitalize on this and really take the leap, that digital leap, that we have been working towards for so many years. So it is time for closing remarks from you, Minister. I want to thank you very much for your presence. But I also want to publicly ask that you put things in place, grease a little wheel, so that we can speak directly to the Student Support Services Division yes. and uh, highlight some of the work that they are doing. We have about, yes. we have about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Um, certainly, we will uh, make the Student Services avail um, Division available for the edification of the public. And I just want to say to all of our parents, teachers, students, I want to give a, a thank you for this last year. It's been a difficult year, and we face another time of difficulty. But we can make it through, and we can make it through even better if we get our children vaccinated and we're able to return to a sense of normalcy at our school. So as my closing remark, I advocate for the vaccination of our children. Let's get them back in school. Thank you so much, Dr. Nian Gatsby Dolly, Education Minister. This has been in depth and on behalf of the entire news team, thank you for joining us.